Good morning, everyone. My name is Ara, and this channel is Rosar's Investments. So Disney came out with their earnings last night, and I have been considering buying some Disney for a while now. And I decided to wait and see what the earnings will be before I made my decision. So I figured I'd make a quick video and uh, kind of let you guys know what I was thinking about um, when I'm considering making my decision. So uh, the general consensus is that Disney did uh, terrific. Um, so it was their fiscal fourth quarter. It was the third quarter of the year, but for them, uh, for accounting purposes, it was their fourth quarter. And um, it seems like revenue grew 12%, which is uh, good for a company like Disney. Um, there were concerns that um, their ESPN division, uh, because of all the uh, millennials not watching cable TV anymore, um, that their ESPN division was uh, too much of a drag and they weren't going to grow anymore. So to grow revenue by 12% um, is a really nice uh, thing to see. And their uh, adjusted earnings per share, uh, and adjusted means uh, taking out one-time costs and um, uh, paying um, employees through uh, stock options and stuff like that. So their adjusted earnings per share, uh, it says soared 38% year over year. So their earnings uh, went up by 38%, which is a, a really good number. Personally, I'm actually more impressed by the 12% uh, revenue growth because I feel like uh, earnings can be manipulated by, um, you know, different things. Um, and you can, um, you know, you can make earnings look uh, better or worse depending on how much uh, you want to uh, reinvest into the company and uh, how aggressive you are with that growth. So I'm very impressed by the 12% uh, the revenue growth though. And so basically now their earnings are 38% more. So if you were to look at a normal PE ratio, that E is a bigger number now, which makes the fraction smaller, the P slash E fraction. So they're actually, in my mind, a cheaper company than they were yesterday. Now, I know it would have been uh, cheaper for me to buy shares at $116 yesterday than to buy shares for $117.50 today, but I'm willing to pay that extra $1.50 because there is, uh, in my mind, there's much less risk by buying shares today. Um, there's probably not a big chance of Disney just dropping off a cliff and losing 10 or 20% this week uh, because their numbers were so good yesterday. Um, that's really going to buoy the stock. So one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to invest in Disney in the first place was because I feel like so many uh, tech companies and companies that I'm really interested in, like Grubhub and PayPal and Align Technology and stuff like that, I feel like, uh, well, Align Technology is not really a tech company, but, you know, borderline. Anyway, uh, I feel like the, uh, the PE ratios are super duper high. So this morning, before I made the video, I checked the... EV to EBITDA ratio, which you can see on my screen right here, EV to EBITDA is 11.11, .11, which is kind of a cool number. Uh, we used to make a wish when the time was 11.11. .11. So uh, I like EV to EBITDA a little bit better than PE ratio because it takes, uh, th so the EV stands for enterprise value and it takes into account uh, the amount of debt that the company has. And EBITDA, I like that a little bit better than earnings because it uh, takes into account the things that uh, Disney has control over this particular quarter. It doesn't take into account stuff like taxes and uh, depreciation and interest. So um, I like this better than, than, than um, uh, price to earnings ratio. Normally, uh, for normal growing companies that are making money, um, the EV to EBITDA ratio is a little bit lower. Um, but a company like uh, Home Depot, for example, um, is typically in the 15 to 20 range for EV to EBITDA, maybe 14 to 20 range. So Disney, I, I feel like the stock is a little bit cheap right now. Um, so at $117, I feel very, very comfortable buying shares. And I feel like if Disney is starting to really grow revenue and really grow earnings, uh, they get some new services that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, this EV to EBITDA ratio could actually grow to maybe 20, let's say, or, you know, start heading towards 20. Maybe it won't hit 20, but maybe head towards 20. Um, and if that happens, you know, the $117 stock today could start heading towards $200.
And on top of that, Disney actually pays a dividend. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting interested in this company. This site that I'm looking at here on my screen is Guru Focus. And if you can see where my cursor is, if you're actually watching the video instead of just listening, um, historically, Disney has had an EV to EBITDA ratio of about 5.1 to 14.3. Um, so this is over the past 10 years. So it's kind of in the middle. Um, I would guess that when Disney had a EV to EBITDA ratio of 5.1, that was probably when we were in the Great Recession of 2009 and Disney was super duper cheap. Um, I think 11.1 historically is probably a pretty low uh, ratio for Disney. So let's see. Uh, their revenue a year ago was 12 and change billion, and now it's 14 and change. Uh, let's see, their net income was 1.75 billion a year ago, and now it's 2.32 billion. And their uh, gap earnings was $1.13 a year ago, now it's $1.55. So that is a really nice jump to go from $1.13 to $1.55. Um, it really is. It, it shows that they're actually making some money on this increased revenue um, that they have. So Disney has been in plans to uh, kind of be a competitor to Netflix, even though Disney is the bigger company, but Netflix seems to be the faster growing company. So Disney has uh, a couple of things. So they have uh, ESPN Plus. Um, ESPN was their biggest division. It might still be. I haven't actually uh, broken down the numbers in too much detail. But they have ESPN Plus, which is uh, direct to consumers consumer streaming, and they just named their newest uh, video service uh, Disney Plus. So I was kind of researching that as I was starting the video. Um, so yeah, Disney Plus, and that's going to have, what is it going to have? Um, Marvel, Star Wars, National Geographic. Oh, I didn't even know Disney had National Geographic. Um, Pixar um, says it'll be a complement to ESPN Plus, which already has 1 million subscribers. Um, you know, this is pretty exciting stuff for, for a mature company like Disney. Um, you know, they got the theme parks, they got the movies division, you know, they got the stableness of earning a lot of money. And, you know, I think they'd already be considered a cash cow. But now they just have some new avenues of growth and some new exciting things to talk about. It, Disney's kind of dependent on, you know, how many people come to the theme parks every year, but, you know, overall, that's pretty consistent. You know, in 2018, 2019, you, you'd guess it's going to be about the same thing. Maybe the prices might go up a spec. A couple more people or a couple less people might go there. Um, but, you know, in general, most people in the economy have jobs, so I think, um, you know, Disney is a logical place for a lot of families to go. Um, let's see what else their movie division, you know, you don't know what's going to come up in 2019, but you can guess that they're going to come out with some great movies like they always do. Um, a lot of movies for kids, a lot of, uh, superhero movies, um, you know, stuff like that. They seem to come out with, uh, movies that actually have a, a very big box office number. Um, let's see, I'll just read out some other numbers that I was kind of looking at here. Um, uh, their cable works. I mean, uh, cable networks revenue. Um, let me see here. So cable networks revenue uh, grew by 5% uh, to 4 billion, 4.13 billion. Um, cable networks operating income, uh, 1.16 billion. Um, that actually declined 6%. Cable uh, networks revenue, I mean, no, sorry, broadcast networks revenue, uh, grew nicely to 1.83 billion. Uh, broadcast networks operating income, uh, the income grew very nice, 66% year over year, uh, 3.79 million now. Um, so Disney has a lot of things going on with it. Um, so on the earnings call last night, uh, the CEO Bob Iger uh, talked a lot about ESPN Plus and Disney Plus. So that's going to be some exciting stuff. Disney Plus isn't going to come out until 2019. So we're not going to get, you know, uh, a huge amount of info, you know, as far as like actual subscriber numbers um, anytime soon. Won't come out till next year. But I think it is usually better to get into stuff, you know, way ahead of time. 
And, you know, kind of imagine if you got into Netflix, you know, when they were still mailing DVDs to people. Um, you know, that would have been a much, much better time to invest your money than to wait until everyone in the world already has Netflix or half the people in the world already have Netflix. Um, but there's some exciting stuff going on. And I think that let's look up the, the P.E. ratio because I don't even know the P.E. ratio. So let's, let's say I believe it's around 14. Uh, Disney P.E. Ratio. Let's see what comes up here. Um, 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 I'll just click on the first site, whatever it is. I should have clicked on NASDAQ. Um, all right, so 17.5. So that is a little bit higher than I expected. Um, I expected it to be closer to 14, uh, not close to 20. I wonder what type of earnings they're using. Um, 2020 estimates, so based on future, so the future earnings estimate is, uh, I mean, the, the future P, forward P-E ratio is uh, 14 and change. Um, I think Disney is uh, fairly valued, uh, maybe a little bit undervalued, but I think they have some nice avenues for growth in the future. So I'm going to buy some shares. Um, I got the Robinhood app. I'll put the link in the description below so you can get a free stock if you want to. I'm not pushing it on you because they're going to give uh, you and I a stupid stock like Groupon or something. But, you know, it is what it is. It's free. So I think I have a little over $1,000 in cash free on the Robinhood app. I'm going to buy $1,000 of Disney, and I'm going to check my Fidelity account when this video is over. And I'm probably going to buy <clears throat> 10 to 20 shares on my Fidelity account. Um, Disney does pay a dividend. Uh, let's see. Let's see some stuff here. You can see some of the companies that I was looking at before in recent history. Let's see the dividend history for Disney. I'm learning along with you guys. Looked at this ahead of time before the video. So it looks like they are paying 84 cents per quarter. No, 84 cents per half. So that's unusual. Disney only pays a dividend um, twice a year. So right now they're paying $1.68 a year. It looks like they have been uh, periodically raising it. So um, in 2016 to 2017, it was uh, 78 cents per half. So a little over $1.50. Now it's a little over $1.60. So it looks like they are raising their dividend. And uh, the fact that their revenues and earnings increase so nicely, I would definitely expect a future dividend in this so not a bad idea um, some investing strategies that I was thinking about alternative to just buying shares were maybe buying a hundred shares for eleven thousand seven hundred and collecting the dividend of a hundred shares of course and maybe selling a call option and I haven't decided exactly how far in the future I want to sell this call option, but just to get some extra income from the stock, uh, perhaps sell a call option. Um, I was considering some things like a, a short term call option right around 117 or maybe a longer term call option, you know, six months away uh, for a stock price of maybe 125 to 130. I haven't looked into it to see how much that is. Um, actually, you know. While I'm on the video, why don't I click on option chain? If I still have anybody left watching this video. Let's see. So usually I don't check the options on NASDAQ, so I'm not super familiar uh, with how it is. But just to give us an idea. Uh, oh, that just disappeared on me. All right. So I only want to look at calls. I want to. All right, well, let's see what's available here. We're looking at the November 2 options here. Strike prices seem to be in the middle here. So if I was to sell a, how is this listed here? It's hard to do this on the spot here. Okay, so the last price is over here. Um, I don't see a bid and an ask on this site. Um, so I'm used to looking at this kind of stuff on Fidelity. So everything, the layout of everything is a little bit different than I'm used to. But let's see. 
I mean, maybe I'm looking at this weird, but so it looks like the Disney Strike 120 price. Um, the last price paid for this was one penny. That doesn't seem right. Um, so the volume is zero. So just the numbers don't seem right. But I just wonder. Oh, of course, it's November 9, and I'm looking at November 2. Why don't I? Uh, why don't I look at a future date instead of something in the past? All right. So let's see. Uh, November 16. This this one is about a week away. Let's close this advertisement here. So November 16. Let's see where we are. 120. I have this highlighted. So 120. November 16. Uh, it was last traded for 67 cents. So because Disney popped up a little bit today, um, I would guess that this had popped up to 80 or 90 cents. Uh, that's pretty close. Um, maybe even uh, closer to a dollar because, uh, you know, Disney is uh, somewhat likely to go over 120 in the next week. So basically, if I bought 100 shares, it would cost me $11,700. And if I sold this option, I would get $100 back and I would be capping my gains at 120. Um, but just to continuously hold the 100 shares, I would always get uh, that dividend, which would be $168 a year right now. Um, and if Disney raises the dividend, that would be uh, probably closer to $200 a year in dividends. And something like this option right here, I could sell this I'm just kind of brainstorming here using this strategy. So I could sell an option like this and get about $67 a week in income from this. Um, it doesn't always work out that perfectly because sometimes Disney will go up too high and the shares will actually get called away from me or Disney will drop too low and I won't want to sell a 120 call option for like three cents or whatever it is. So it's not a perfect strategy, but to ballpark it, um, you know, it might be something like getting $67 a week if the share price was steady, which is not going to be again, but if it was steady, um, I could get $67 a week off of those hundred shares. So I'll see what my options are. I hope I didn't lose everyone. I'm just kind of brainstorming here. Um, if you like this video or if you want me to do a different company, please let me know. Um, or if you want any more information about Disney, please leave uh, any questions in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great day.